prelude of the war poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon read for LibriVox.org by K Hand Prelude the Troops Dim gradual thinning of the shapeless gloom shudders to drizzling daybreak that reveals disconsolate men who stamp their sodden boots and turn dulled sunken faces to the sky haggard and hopeless they who have beaten down the stale despair of night must now renew their desolation in the truce of dawn murdering the livid hours that grope for peace yet these who cling to life with stubborn hands can grin through storms of death and find a gap in the clawed cruel tangles of his defence they march from safety and the bird-sung joy of green grass thickets to the land where all is ruin and nothing blossoms but the sky that hastens over them where they endure sad smoking flat horizons reeking woods and foundered trench lines volleying doom for doom oh my brave brown companions when your souls flock silently away and the eyeless dead shame the wild beast of battle on the ridge death will stand grieving in that field of war since your unvanquished hardihood is spent and through some mooned valhalla there will pass battalions and battalions scarred from hell the unreturning army that was youth the legions who have suffered and are dust end of prelude this librivox recording is in the public domain section 1 of the war poems of siegfried sassoon by siegfried sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand. Dreamers. Soldiers are citizens of death's gray land, drawing no dividend from time's tomorrows. In the great hour of destiny they stand, each with his feuds and jealousies and sorrows. Soldiers are sworn to action, they must win some flaming fatal climax with their lives. Soldiers are dreamers. When the guns begin, they think of firelit homes, clean beds, and wives. I see them in foul dugouts gnawed by rats, and in the ruined trenches lashed with rain, dreaming of things they did with balls and bats, and mocked by hopeless longing to regain bank holidays and picture shows and spats, and going to the office in the train. End of section one. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 2 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix The Redeemer Darkness, the rain sluiced down. The mire was deep. It was past twelve on a midwinter night when peaceful folk in beds lay snug asleep. There, with much work to do before the light, we lugged our clay-sucked boots as best we might along the trench. Sometimes a bullet sang, and droning shells burst with a hollow bang. We were soaked, chilled, and wretched, every one. Darkness, the distant wink of a huge gun. I turned in the black ditch, loathing the storm. A rocket fizzed and burned with blanching flare, And lit the face of what had been a form floundering in murk. He stood before me there. I say that he was Christ, Stiff in the glare and leaning forward from his burdening task, Both arms supporting it, his eyes on mine, Stared from the woeful head that seemed a mask Of mortal pain in hell's unholy shine. No thorny crown, only a woollen cap he wore. An English soldier, white and strong, Who loved his time like any simple chap, Good days of work and sport and homely song. Now he has learned that nights are very long, And dawn a watching of the windowed sky. But to the end, unjudging, he'll endure horror and pain, Not uncontent to die that Lancaster on loon may stand secure. He faced me reeling in his weariness, shouldering his load of planks so hard to bear. I say that he was Christ, 
who wrought to bless all groping things with freedom bright as air and with his mercy washed and made them fair then the flame sank and all grew black as pitch while we began to struggle along the ditch and some one flung his burden in the muck mumbling oh christ almighty now i'm stuck End of section two. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section three of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox by Asterix. Trench Duty. Shaken from sleep and numbed and scarce awake out in the trench with three hours watch to take i blunder through the splashing murk and then hear the gruff muttering voices of the men crouching in cabins candle chinked with light hark there's the big bombardment on our right rumbling and bumping and the dark's a glare of flickering horror in the sectors where we raid the bosch men waiting stiff and chilled or crawling on their bellies through the wire what stretcher bearer wanted someone killed five minutes ago i heard a sniper fire why did he do it starlight overhead blank stars i'm wide awake and some chap's dead end of section three this librivox recording is in the public domain Section 4 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox by Asterix Wirers Pass it along, the wiring part is going out And yawning sentries mumble, wirers going out Unraveling, twisting, hammering stakes with muffled thud they toil with stealthy haste and anger in their blood the bosch sends up a flare black forms stand rigid there stock still like posts then darkness and the clumsy ghosts stride hither and thither whispering tripped by clutching snare of snags and tangles Ghastly dawn with vaporous coasts gleams desolate along the sky, night's misery ended. Young Hughes was badly hit. I heard him carried away, moaning at every lurch. No doubt he'll die today. But we can say the front line wire's been safely mended. End of section four. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 5 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Recorded for LibriVox.org by Asterix Break of Day There seemed a smell of autumn in the air at the bleak end of night he shivered there in a dank musty dugout where he lay legs wrapped in sandbags lumps of chalk and clay spattering his face dry mouthed he thought to-day we start the damned attack and lord knows why zeroes at nine how bloody if i'm done in under the freedom of that morning sky and then he coughed and dozed cursing the din was it the ghost of autumn in that smell of underground or god's blank heart grown kind that sent a happy dream to him in hell where men are crushed like clods and crawl to find some crater for their wretchedness who lie in outcast immolation doomed to die far from clean things or any hope of cheer cowed anger in their eyes till darkness brims and roars into their heads and they can hear old childish talk and tags of foolish hymns he sniffs the chilly air 
his dreaming starts. He's riding in a dusty Sussex lane in quiet September. Slowly night departs, and he's a living soul, absolved from pain. Beyond the brambled fences where he goes are glimmering fields with harvest piled in sheaves, and treetops dark against the stars grown pale. Then, clear and shrill, a distant farm cock crows, and there's a wall of mist along the vale where willows shake their watery sounding leaves. He gazes on it all and scarce believes that earth is telling its old peaceful tale. He thanks the blessed world that he was born, then far away a lonely note of the horn. They're drawing the big wood. Unlatch the gate and set Golumpus going on the grass. He knows the corner where it's best to wait and hear the crashing woodland chorus pass. The corner where old foxes make their track to the long spinney. That's the place to be. The bracken shakes below an ivied tree and then a cub looks out and tally-o back he bawls and swings his thong with volleying crack all the clean thrill of autumn in his blood and hunting surging through him like a flood in joyous welcome from the untroubled past while the war drifts away forgotten at last now a red sleepy sun above the rim of twilight stares along the quiet weald and the kind simple country shines revealed in solitudes of peace no longer dim the old horse lifts his face and thanks the light then stretches down his head to crop the green all things that he has loved are in his sight the places where his happiness has been are in his eyes his heart and they are good Hark, there's the horn, they're drawing the big wood. End of section five. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section six of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix. A working party. Three hours ago he blundered up the trench, sliding and poising, groping with his boots. Sometimes he tripped and lurched against the walls with hands that poured the sodden bags of chalk. He couldn't see the man who walked in front, only he heard the drum and rattle of feet stepping along the trench boards often splashing wretchedly where the sludge was ankle-deep. Voices would grunt, Keep to your right, mate way, when squeezing past the men from the front line. White faces peered, puffing a point of red. Candles and braziers glinted through the chinks and curtain flaps of dugouts. Then the gloom swallowed his sense of sight. He stooped and swore because a sagging wire had caught his neck. A flare went up. The shining whiteness spread and flickered upward, showing nimble rats and mounds of glimmering sandbags bleached with rain. Then the slow silver moment died in dark. The wind came posting by with chilly gusts and buffeting at corners piping thin and dreary through the crannies. Rifle shots would split and crack and sing along the night, and shells came calmly through the drizzling air to burst with hollow bang below the hill. Three hours ago he stumbled up the trench. Now he will never walk that road again. He must be carried back, a jolting lump beyond all need of tenderness and care a nine-stone corpse with nothing more to do. He was a young man with a meagre wife and two pale children in a Midland town. He showed the photograph to all his mates and they considered him a decent chap who did his work and hadn't much to say and always laughed at other people's jokes because he hadn't any of his own. 
that night when he was busy at his job of piling bags along the parapet he thought how slow time went stamping his feet and blowing on his fingers pinched with cold he thought of getting back by half past twelve and a tot of rum to send him warm to sleep in draughty dugout frowsty with the fumes of coke and full of snoring weary men he pushed another bag along the top craning his body outward then a flare gave one white glimpse of no man's land and wire and as he dropped his head the instant split his startled life with lead and all went out end of section six this librivox recording is in the public domain section seven of the war poems of siegfried sassoon by siegfried sassoon read for librivox dot org by asterix i had been on duty from two till four i went and stared at the dugout door down in the frost i heard them snore stand to somebody grunted and swore dawn was misty the skies were still larks were singing discordant shrill they seemed happy but i felt ill deep in water i splashed my way up the trench to our bogged front line rain had fallen the whole damned night oh jesus send me a wound to-day and i'll be leaving your bread and wine and get my bloody old sins washed white end of section seven this librivox recording is in the public domain section eight of the war poems of siegfried sassoon by siegfried sassoon read for librivox dot org by asterix in the pink so davies wrote this leaves me in the pink then scrawled his name your loving sweetheart willie with crosses for a hug he'd had a drink of rum and tea and though the barn was chilly for once his blood ran warm he had pay to spend winter was passing soon the year would mend he couldn't sleep that night stiff in the dark he groaned and thought of sundays at the farm when he'd go out as cheerful as a lark in his best suit to wander arm in arm with brown-eyed gwen and whisper in her ear the simple silly things she liked to hear and then he thought to-morrow night we trudge up to the trenches and my boots are rotten five miles of stodgy clay and freezing sludge and everything but wretchedness forgotten to-night he's in the pink but soon he'll die and still the war goes on he don't know why. End of section eight. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section nine of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix. The Hero. Jack fell as he'd have wished the mother said and folded up the letter that she'd read the colonel writes so nicely something broke in the tired voice that quavered to a choke she half looked up we mothers are so proud of our dead soldiers then her face was bowed quietly the brother officer went out he told the poor old dear some gallant lies that she would nourish all her days no doubt for while he coughed and mumbled her weak eyes had shone with gentle triumph brimmed with joy because he'd been so brave her glorious boy he thought how jack cold-footed useless swine had panicked down the trench that night the mine went up a wicked corner how he tried to get sent home and how at last he died blown to small bits and no one seemed to care except that lonely woman with white hair end of section nine 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 10 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Before the Battle Music of whispering trees Hushed by the broad-winged breeze Where shaken water gleams And evening radiance falling With reedy bird notes calling Oh, bear me safe through dark You low-voiced streams I have no need to pray That fear may pass away I scorn the growl and rumble of the fight That summons me from cool silence Of marsh and pool And yellow lilies islanded in light O oh, river of stars and shadows Lead me through the night June the 25th, 1916 End of section 10 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain Section 11 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix The Road The road is thronged with women Soldiers pass and halt, but never see them. Yet they're here, a patient crowd along the sodden grass, silent, worn out with waiting, sick with fear. The road goes crawling up a long hillside, all ruts and stones and sludge, and the emptied dregs of battle thrown in heaps. Here where they died are stretched big-bellied horses with stiff legs and dead men bloody fingered from the fight stare up at caverned darkness winking white you in the bomb scorched kilt poor sprawling jock you tottered here and fell and stumbled on half dazed for want of sleep no dream could mock your reeling brain with comforts lost and gone you did not feel her arms about your knees her blind caress her lips upon your head too tired for thoughts of home and love and ease. The road would serve you well enough for bed. End of section 11 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 12 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon By Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Two Hundred Years After Trudging by Corby Ridge one winter's night, Unless old hearsay memories tricked his sight, Along the pallid edge of the quiet sky He watched a nosing lorry grinding on, And straggling files of men. When these were gone, a double limber and six mules went by hauling the rations up through ruts and mud to trench lines digged two hundred years ago then darkness hid them with a rainy scud and soon he saw the village lights below but when he told his tale an old man said that he'd seen soldiers pass along that hill poor silent things they were the english dead who came to fight in france and got their fill End of section 12. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 13 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix. Moonlight and dew-drenched blossom and the scent of summer gardens. These can bring you all those dreams that in the starlit silence fall. Sweet songs are full of odours. While I went last night in drizzling dusk along a lane, I passed a squalid farm. From byre and midden came the rank smell that brought me once again a dream of war that in the past was hidden. Up a disconsolate straggling village street I saw the tired troops trudge. I heard their feet. 
the cheery qms was there to meet and guide our company in i watched them stumble into some crazy hovel too beat to grumble saw them file inward slipping from their backs rifles equipment packs on filthy straw they sit in the gloom each face bowed to patched sodden boots they must unlace while the wind chills their sweat through chinks and cracks i'm looking at their blistered feet young jones stares up at me mud splashed and white and jaded out of his eyes the morning light has faded old soldiers with three winters in their bones puff their damp woodbines whistle stretch their toes they can still grin at me for each of em knows that i am as tired as they are can they guess the secret burden that is always mine pride in their courage pity for their distress and burning bitterness that i must take them to the accursed line i cannot hear their voices but i see dim candles in the barn they gulp their tea and soon they'll sleep like logs ten miles away the battle winks and thuds in blundering strife and i must lead them nearer day by day to the foul beast of war that bludgeons life end of section thirteen this librivox recording is in the public domain Section 14 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix At Carnoy Down in the hollow there's the whole brigade camped in four groups. Through twilight falling slow I hear a sound of mouth organs, ill played, and murmur of voices, gruff, confused, and low. Crouched among thistle tufts, I've watched the glow of a blurred orange sunset flare and fade, and I'm content. Tomorrow we must go to take some cursed wood. O oh, world God made. July the third, nineteen sixteen. End of section fourteen. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 15 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox by Asterix Battalion Relief Fall in now, get a move on! Curse the rain! We splash away along the straggling village Out to the flat, rich country green with June And sunset flares across wet crops and tillage blazing with splendour patches harvest soon up in the line perhaps the war will be done by christmas time keep smiling then old son here's the canal it's dusk we cross the bridge lead on there by platoons the lines are glare with shell fire through the poplars distant rattle of rifles and machine guns fritz is there christ ain't it lively sergeant is to battle more rain the lightning blinks and thunder rumbles there's overhead artillery some chap grumbles what's all this mob by the crossroad the guides lead on with number one and off they go three-minute intervals poor blundering files sweating and blindly burdened who's to know if death will catch them in those two dark miles more rain lead on headquarters that's the lot who's that oh sergeant major don't get shot and tell me have we won this war or not end of section fifteen this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 16 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon 
Read for LibriVox by Asterix. The Dugout Why do you lie with your legs ungainly huddled, And one arm bent across your sullen, cold, exhausted face? It hurts my heart to watch you, Deep shadowed from the candle's guttering gold, And you wonder why I shake you by the shoulder. Drowsy you mumble and sigh and turn your head. You are too young to fall asleep forever, and when you sleep you remind me of the dead. End of section 16 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 17 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix The Rear Guard Hindenburg Line, April 1917 Groping along the tunnel, step by step, He winked his prying torch with patching glare from side to side and sniffed the unwholesome air tins boxes bottles shapes too vague to know a mirror smashed the mattress from a bed and he exploring fifty feet below the rosy gloom of battle overhead tripping he grabbed the wall saw some one lie humped at his feet half hidden by a rug and stooped to give the sleeper's arm a tug I'm looking for headquarters. No reply. God blast your neck! For days he'd had no sleep. Get up and guide me through this stinking place. Savage, he kicked a soft, unanswering heap and flashed his beam across the livid face, terribly glaring up, whose eyes yet wore agony, dying hard ten days before and fists of fingers clutched a blackening wound alone he staggered on until he found dawn's ghost that filtered down a shafted stair to the dazed muttering creatures underground who hear the boom of shells in muffled sound at last with sweat of horror in his hair he climbed through darkness to the twilight air unloading hell behind him Step by step. End of section seventeen. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section eighteen of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix. I stood with the dead. I stood with the dead, so forsaken and still. When dawn was grey, I stood with the dead, and my slow heart said, You must kill, you must kill. Soldier, soldier, morning is red. On the shapes of the slain in their crumpled disgrace, I stared for a while through the thin cold rain. O oh, lad that I love, there is rain on your face, And your eyes are blurred and sick like the plain. I stood with the dead. They were dead. They were dead. My heart and my head beat a march of dismay, And gusts of the wind came dulled by the guns. Fall in, I shouted. Fall in for your pay. End of section 18 this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 19 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Suicide in Trenches I knew a simple soldier boy, who grinned at life in empty joy, slept soundly through the lonesome dark, and whistled early with the lark. In winter trenches, cowed and glum, with crumps and lice and lack of rum, he put a bullet through his brain. No one spoke of him again. 
you smug-faced crowds with kindling eye who cheer when soldier lads march by sneak home and pray you'll never know the hell where youth and laughter go end of section nineteen this librivox recording is in the public domain section twenty of the war poems of siegfried sassoon by siegfried sassoon read for librivox dot org by asterix the attack at dawn the ridge emerges massed and dun in the wild purple of the glowering sun smouldering through spouts of drifting smoke that shroud the menacing scarred slope and one by one tanks creep and topple forward to the wire the barrage roars and lifts then clumsily bowed with bombs and guns and shoals and battle gear men jostle and climb to meet the bristling fire lines of grey muttering faces masked with fear they leave their trenches going over the top while time ticks blank and busy on their wrists and hope with furtive eyes and grappling fists flounders in mud Oh, Jesus, make it stop. End of section 20. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 21 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix. Counterattack. We'd gained our first objective hours before, while dawn broke like a face with blinking eyes, pallid, unshaved and thirsty, blind with smoke. Things seemed all right at first. We held their line with bombers posted, Lewis guns well placed, and clink of shovels deepening the shallow trench. The place was rotten with dead green clumsy legs high-booted sprawled and grovelled along the saps and trunks face downward in the sucking mud wallowed like trodden sandbags loosely filled and naked sodden buttocks mats of hair bulged clotted heads slept in the plastering slime and then the rain began the jolly old rain a yawning soldier knelt against the bank, staring across the morning blear with fog. He wondered when the Alamons would get busy, and then, of course, they started with five nines, traversing, sure as fate and never a dud. Mute in the clamour of shells, he watched them burst, spouting dark earth and wire with gusts from hell, while posturing giants dissolved in drifts of smoke. He crouched and flinched, dizzy with galloping fear, sick for escape, loathing the strangled horror and butchered frantic gestures of the dead. An officer came blundering down the trench. Stand to and man the fire step. On he went, gasping and bawling, fire step, counter attack. Then the haze lifted, bombing on the right, down the old sap, machine guns on the left, and stumbling figures looming out in front. Oh, Christ, they're coming at us! Bullets spat, and he remembered his rifle. Rapid fire! And started blazing wildly. Then a bang crumpled and spun him sideways, knocked him out, to grunt and wriggle. None heeded him. He choked and fought the flapping veils of smothering gloom, lost in a blurred confusion of yells and groans. Down! and down and down he sank and drowned bleeding to death the counter-attack had failed end of section twenty one this librivox recording is in the public domain section twenty two of the war poems of siegfried sassoon by siegfried sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Kissong. The Effect The effect of our bombardment was terrific. 
One man told me he had never seen so many dead before. War correspondent. He'd never seen so many dead before. They sprawled in yellow daylight while he swore and gasped and lugged his everlasting load of bombs along what once had been a road. How peaceful are the dead! Who put that silly gag in someone's head? He'd never seen so many dead before. The lilting words danced up and down his brain while corpses jumped and capered in the rain. No. No, HFC wouldn't count them any more. The dead have done with pain. They've choked. They can't come back to life again. When Dick was killed last week, he looked like that, flapping along the fire step like a fish after the blazing crump had knocked him flat. How many dead? As many as ever you wish. Don't count them. They're too many. Who'll buy my nice fresh corpses to a penny? End of section 22. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 23 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong Remorse Lost in the swamp and welter of the pit, he flounders off the duckboards. Only he knows each flash and spouting crash, each instant lit when gloom reveals the streaming rain. He goes heavily, blindly on, and while he blunders, could anything be worse than this? He wonders, remembering how he saw those Germans run, screaming for mercy among the stumps of trees, green-faced. They dodged and darted. There was one, livid with terror, clutching at his knees. Our chaps were sticking him like pigs. Oh, hell, he thought. There's things in war one dare not tell, poor fathers sitting safe at home, who reads of dying heroes and their deathless deeds. End of section 23. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 24 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong In an Underground Dressing Station Quietly they set their burden down. He tried to grin, moaned, moved his head from side to side. He gripped the stretcher, stiffened, glared and screamed, Oh! Put my leg down, doctor, do. He'd got a bullet in his ankle, and he'd been shot horribly through the guts. The surgeon seemed so kind and gentle, saying above that crying, You must keep still, my lad. But he was dying. End of section 24. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 25 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Died of Wounds His wet, white face and miserable eyes Brought nurses to him more than groans and sighs But hoarse and low and rapid rose and fell His troubled voice He did the business well the ward grew dark, but he was still complaining and calling out for Dicky. Curse the wood! It's time to go. Oh, Christ, and what's the good? We'll never take it, and it's always raining. 
I wondered where he'd been, then heard him shout, They snipe like hell, oh Dicky, don't go out. I fell asleep. Next morning he was dead, and some slight wound lay smiling on his bed. End of section 25 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 26 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix They The bishop tells us when the boys come back they will not be the same for they'll have fought in a just cause. They lead the last attack on Antichrist. Their comrades' blood has bought new right to breed an honourable race. They have challenged death and dared him face to face. We're none of us the same, the boys reply, for George lost both his legs, and Bill's stone blind. Poor Jim shot through the lungs and liked to die, and Bert's gone syphilitic. You'll not find a chap who's served that hasn't found some change. And the bishop said, The ways of God are strange. End of section 26 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 27 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Base Details if I were fierce and bald and short of breath, I'd live with scarlet mages at the base, and speed glum heroes up the line to death. You'd see me with my puffy petulant face, guzzling and gulping in the best hotel, reading the roll of honour. Poor young chap, I'd say. I used to know his father well. Yes, we've lost heavily in this last scrap. And when the war is done and youth stone dead, I'd toddle safely home and die in bed. End of section 27. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 28 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong. Lamentations. I found him in a guardroom at the base. From the blind darkness I'd heard his crying and blundered in. With puzzled, patient face a sergeant watched him. It was no good trying to stop it, for he howled and beat his chest. And all because his brother had gone west, raved at the bleeding war. His rampant grief moaned, shouted, sobbed, and choked while he was kneeling half-naked on the floor. In my belief such men have lost all patriotic feeling. End of section 28 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 29 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong The General Good morning, good morning, the General said when we met him last week on our way to the line. Now the soldiers he smiled at are most of them dead, and were cursing his staff for incompetent swine. He's a cheery old god grunted Harry to Jack as they slogged up to Eris with rifle and pack. But he did for them both by his plan of attack. End of section 29. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 30 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix How to Die Dark clouds are smouldering into red 
while down the crater's morning burns the dying soldier shifts his head to watch the glory that returns he lifts his fingers toward the skies where holy brightness breaks in flame radiance reflected in his eyes and on his lips a whispered name you'd think to hear some people talk that lads go west with sobs and curses and sullen faces white as chalk hankering for wreaths and tombs and hearses but they've been taught the way to do it like christian soldiers not with haste and shuddering groans but passing through it with due regard for decent taste end of section thirty this librivox recording is in the public domain Section 31 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong Editorial Impressions He seemed so certain all was going well as he discussed the glorious time he'd had while visiting the trenches. One can tell you've gathered big impressions grinned the lad, who'd been severely wounded in the back in some wiped-out, impossible attack. Impressions? Yes, most vivid. I am writing a little book called Europe on the Rack, based on notes made while witnessing the fighting. I hope I've caught the feeling of the line and the amazing spirit of the troops. By Jove, those flying chaps of ours are fine. I watched one daring beggar looping loops soaring and diving like some bird of prey, and through it all I felt that splendor shine which makes us win. The soldier sipped his wine. Ah, yes, but it's the press that leads the way. End of section 31. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 32 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Fight to a Finish The boys came back, bands played and flags were flying, and yellow pressmen thronged the sunlit street to cheer the soldiers who'd refrained from dying, and hear the music of returning feet. Of all the thrills and ardours war has brought, this moment is the finest, so they thought. Snapping their bayonets on to charge the mob, grim fusiliers broke ranks with glint of steel. At last the boys had found a cushy job. I heard the yellow pressmen grunt and squeal, and with my trusty bombers turned and went to clear those yonkers out of Parliament. End of section 32. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 33 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong. Atrocities. You told me in your drunken, boasting mood how once you butchered prisoners. That was good. I'm sure you felt no pity while they stood patient and cowed and scared as prisoners should. How did you do them in? Come, don't be shy. You know I love to hear how Germans die. Downstairs in dugouts. Kamerad! they cry. Then squeal like stoats when bombs begin to fly. And you? I know your record. You went sick when orders looked unwholesome. Then with trick and lie you wangled home, and here you are, still talking big and boozing in a bar. End of section 33. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 34 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon 
Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong. The Fathers Snug at the club two fathers sat, Gross, goggle-eyed, and full of chat. One of them said, My eldest lad writes cheery letters from Baghdad, But Arthur's getting all the fun at Eris with his nine-inch gun. Yes, wheezed the other, that's the luck. My boy's quite broken-hearted, stuck in England training all this year. Still, if there's truth in what we hear, the Huns intend to ask for more before they bolt across the Rhine. I watched them toddle through the door, these impotent old friends of mine. End of section 34 this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 35 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Blighters The house is crammed. Tier beyond tier they grin and cackle at the show, while prancing ranks of harlots shrill the chorus, drunk with din. We're sure the Kaiser loves the dear old tanks. I'd like to see a tank come down the stalls, lurching to ragtime tunes, or home, sweet home, and there'd be no more jokes in music halls to mock the riddled corpses round Bapome. End of section 35 this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 36 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong Glory of Women You love us when we're heroes, home on leave, or wounded in a mentionable place. You worship decorations. You believe that chivalry redeems the war's disgrace. You make us shells. You listen with delight by tales of dirt and danger fondly thrilled. You crown our distant ardors while we fight, and mourn our laureled memories when we're killed. You can't believe that British troops retire when hell's last horror breaks them and they run, trampling the terrible corpses blind with blood. O oh, German mother, dreaming by the fire, while you are knitting socks to send your son, his face is trodden deeper in the mud. End of section 36. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 37 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong Their Frailty He's got a blighty wound. He's safe, and then war's fine and bold and bright. She can forget the doomed and prisoned men who agonize and fight. He's back in France. She loathes the listless strain and peril of his plight. Beseeching heaven to send him home again, she prays for peace each night. Husbands and sons and lovers, everywhere they die, war bleeds us white. Mothers and wives and sweethearts, they don't care so long as he's all right. End of section 37. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 38 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Does it matter? Does it matter, losing your legs? For people will always be kind, and you need not show that you mind when the others come in after football to gobble their muffins and eggs. Does it matter, losing your sight? There's such splendid work for the blind, and people will always be kind as you sit on the terrace remembering and turning your face to the light. Do they matter, those dreams from the pit? 
You can drink and forget and be glad, and people won't say that you're mad, for they all know that you fought for your country, and no one will worry a bit. End of section 38 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 39 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Survivors No doubt they'll soon get well. The shock and strain have caused their stammering, disconnected talk. Of course they're longing to go out again, these boys with old, scared faces learning to walk. They'll soon forget their haunted nights, their cowed subjection to the ghosts of friends who died, their dreams that drip with murder, and they'll be proud of glorious war that shattered all their pride. Men who went out to battle grim and glad, children with eyes that hate you, broken and mad. Craig Lockhart, October 1917 End of section 39 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 40 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix Joy Bells Ring your sweet bells but let them be farewells to the green vistaed gladness of the past that changed us into soldiers swing your bells to a joyful chime but let it be the last what means this metal in windy belfries hung when guns are all our need dissolve these bells whose tones are tuned for peace with martial tongue let them cry doom and storm the sun with shells Bells are like fierce-browed prelates who proclaim that, if our Lord returned, he'd fight for us. So let our bells and bishops do the same, shoulder to shoulder with the motor bus. End of section 40. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 41 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong Arms and the Man Young Croesus went to pay his call on Colonel Sawbones, Caxton Hall. And though his wound was healed and mended, he hoped he'd get his leave extended. The waiting room was dark and bare. He eyed a neat-framed notice there, above the fireplace, hung to show disabled heroes where to go for arms and legs, with scale of price and words of dignified advice how officers could get them free. Elbow or shoulder, hip or knee, two arms, two legs, though all were lost, they'd be restored him free of cost. Then a girl guide looked in to say, Will Captain Creases come this way? End of section 41. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 42 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong. When I'm Among a Blaze of Lights. When I'm among a blaze of lights with tawdry music and cigars and women dawdling through delights and officers at cocktail bars, sometimes I think of garden nights and elm trees nodding at the stars. I dream of a small fire-lit room with yellow candles burning straight and glowing pictures in the gloom and kindly books that hold me late. Of things like these I love to think when I can never be alone. Then someone says, Another drink? And turns my living heart to stone. 
End of section 42. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 43 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix. The Kiss. To these I turn, in these I trust, Brother Lead and Sister Steel. To his blind power I make appeal. I guard her beauty clean from rust. He spins and burns and loves the air, And splits a skull to win my praise. But up the nobly marching days She glitters naked, cold, and fair. Sweet sister, grant your soldier this, That in good fury he may feel The body where he sets his heel Quail from your downward darting kiss. End of section 43 this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 44 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong The Tombstone Maker He primmed his loose red mouth and leaned his head against a sorrowing angel's breast and said, You'd think so much bereavement would have made unusual big demands upon my trade. The war comes cruel hard on some poor folk. Unless the fighting stops, I'll soon be broke. He eyed the cemetery across the road. There's scores of bodies out abroad this while that should be here by rights. They little knowed how they'd get buried in such wretched style. I told him with a sympathetic grin that Germans boiled dead soldiers down for fat, and he was horrified. What shameful sin, oh, sir, that Christian men should come to that! End of section 44. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 45 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong. The One Legged Man. Propped on a stick, he viewed the August wield squat orchard trees and oasts with painted cowls, a homely tangled hedge, a corn-stook field with sound of barking dogs and farmyard fowls, and he'd come home again to find it more desirable than ever it was before. How right it seemed that he should reach the span of comfortable years allowed to man splendid to eat and sleep and choose a wife safe with his wound a citizen of life he hobbled blithely through the garden gate and thought thank god they had to amputate end of section 45 this librivox recording is in the public domain Section 46 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Return of the Heroes A lady watches from the crowd, enthusiastic, flushed, and proud. Oh, there's Sir Henry Dudster, such a splendid leader. How pleased he looks! What rows of ribbons on his tunic! such dignity saluting wave your flag now frida yes dear i saw a prussian general once at munich here's the next carriage jack was once in legget's corps that's him i think the stout one is sir godfrey stumer they must feel sad to know they can't win any more great victories Aren't they glorious men, so full of humor? End of section 46. 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 47 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Carla Cortes. Twelve months after. Hello, here's my platoon, the lot I had last year. The war will be over soon. What hopes? No bloody fear. Then, number seven, shun, all present and correct. They are standing in the sun, impassive and direct. John Gibson with his grin, and Morgan tired and white. Jordan, who's out to win at DCM some night. And Hughes, that's keen on wiring. And Davis, 79 who always must be firing at the Boucher front line. All soldiers never die. They simply fight a while. That's what they used to sing along the roads last spring. That's what they used to say before the push began. That's where they are today, knocked over to a man. End of section 47 this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 48 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong To Any Dead Officer Well, how are things in heaven? I wish you'd say, because I'd like to know that you're all right. Tell me, have you found everlasting day, or been sucked in by everlasting night? For when I shut my eyes, your face shows plain. I hear you make some cheery old remark. I can rebuild you in my brain, though you've gone out patrolling in the dark. You hated tours of trenches. You were proud of nothing more than having good years to spend, longed to get home and join the careless crowd of chaps who work in peace with time for friend. That's all washed out now. You're beyond the wire. No earthly chance can send you crawling back. You've finished with machine gun fire, knocked over in a hopeless dud attack. Somehow I always thought you'd get done in because you were so desperate keen to live. You were all out to try and save your skin, well knowing how much the world had got to give. You joked at shells and talked the usual shop, stuck to your dirty job and did it fine with Jesus Christ, when will it stop? Three years. It's hell unless we break their line. So when they told me you'd been left for dead, I wouldn't believe them, feeling it must be true. Next week, the bloody roll of honor said, wounded and missing. That's the thing to do when lads are left in shell holes, dying slow with nothing but blank sky and wounds that ache, moaning for water till they know it's night and then it's not worthwhile to wake. Goodbye, old lad. Remember me to God, and tell him that our politicians swear they won't give in till Prussian rule's been trod under the heel of England. Are you there? Yes, and the war won't end for at least two years, but we've got stacks of men. I'm blind with tears staring into the dark. Chiro. I wish they'd killed you in a decent show. End of section 48. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 49 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for 
LibriVox.org by Carla Cortes. Sick Leaf. When I'm asleep, dreaming and lulled and warm, they come, the homeless ones, the noiseless dead. While the dim charging breakers of the storm below and drawn and rumble overhead, out of the gloom they gather about my bed. They whisper to my heart, their thoughts are mine. Why are you here with all your watches ended? From Ypres to Frise we sought you in the line. In bitter safety I awake, unfriended. And while the dawn begins with slashing rain, I think of the battalion in the mud. When are you going out to them again? Are they not still your brothers through our blood? End of section 49 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 50 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Panos Banishment I am banished from the patient men who fight. They smote my heart to pity, built my pride. Shoulder to aching shoulder, side by side, they trudged away from life's broad welds of light. Their wrongs were mine, and ever in my sight they went arrayed in honour. But they died not one by one, and mutinous I cried to those who sent them out into the night. The darkness tells how vainly I have striven to free them from the pit where they must dwell in outcast gloom, convulsed and jagged and riven by grappling guns. Love drove me to rebel. Love drives me back to grope with them through hell, and in their tortured eyes I stand forgiven. End of section 50. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 51 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Panos Autumn October's bellowing anger breaks and cleaves the bronzed battalions of the stricken wood, in whose lament I hear a voice that grieves for battle's fruitless harvest and the feud of outraged men. Their lives are like the leaves, scattered in flocks of ruin, tossed and blown along the westering furnace flaring red. O oh, martyred youth and manhood overthrown, the burden of your wrongs is on my head. End of section 51. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 52 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Panos Repression of War Experience Now light the candles. One, two, there's a moth. What silly beggars they are to blunder in and scorch their wings with glory. Liquid flame. No, no, not that. It's bad to think of war. When thoughts you've gagged all day come back to scare you, and it's been proved that soldiers don't go mad unless they lose control of ugly thoughts that drive them out to jabber among the trees. Now, light your pipe. Look, what a steady hand. Draw a deep breath. Stop thinking. Count fifteen, and you're as right as rain. Why won't it rain? I wish there'd be a thunderstorm tonight, with buckets full of water to sluice the dark and make the roses hang their dripping heads. Books, what a jolly company they are, standing so quiet and patient on their shelves, dressed in dim brown and black and white and green and every kind of colour. Which will you read? Come on, oh, do read something. They're so wise. I tell you, all the wisdom of the world is waiting for you on those shelves, and yet you sit and gnaw your nails and let your pipe out and listen to the silence. On the ceiling there's one big dizzy moth that bumps and flutters, and in the breathless air outside the house the garden waits for something that delays. There must be crowds of ghosts among the trees. 
not people killed in battle there in france but horrible shapes in shrouds old men who died slow natural deaths old men with ugly souls who wore their bodies out with nasty sins you're quiet and peaceful summering safe at home you'd never think there was a bloody war on oh yes you would why you can hear the guns hark thud 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 quite soft they never cease those whispering guns oh christ i want to go out and screech at them to stop i'm going crazy i'm going stark staring mad because of the guns end of section 52 this librivox recording is in the public domain Section 53 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong Together Splashing along the boggy woods all day And over brambled hedge and holding clay I shall not think of him But when the watery fields grow brown and dim And hounds have lost their fox and horses tire I know that he'll be with me on my way home through the darkness to the evening fire. He's jumped each stile along the glistening lanes. His hand will be upon the mud-soaked reins. Hearing the saddle creak, he'll wonder if the frost will come next week. I shall forget him in the morning light. And while we gallop on, he will not speak. But at the stable door he'll say, Good night. End of section 53. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 54 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Asterix the hawthorn tree not much to me is yonder lane where i go every day but when there's been a shower of rain and hedge birds whistle gay i know my lad that's out in france with fearsome things to see would give his eyes for just one glance at our white hawthorn tree not much to me is yonder lane where he so longs to tread but when there's been a shower of rain, I think I'll never weep again until I've heard he's dead. End of section 54 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 55 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Mark Hissong Concert Party Egyptian Base Camp They are gathering round Out of the twilight over the gray-blue sand Shoals of low jargoning men drift inward to the sound The jangle and throb of a piano tum de tum Drawn by a lamp they come Out of the glimmering lines of their tents Over the shuffling sand Oh, sing us the songs, the songs of our own land, you warbling ladies in white. Dimness conceals the hunger in our faces, this wall of faces risen out of the night, these eyes that keep their memories of the places so long beyond their sight. Jaded and gay the ladies sing, and the chap in brown tilts his gray hat, Jaunty and lean and pale, he rattles the keys, some actor bloke from town. God send you home, and then a long, long trail. I hear you calling me, and Dixieland. Sing slowly, now the chorus, one by one. We hear them, drink them, till the concert's done. Silent, I watch the shadowy mass of soldiers stand. Silent, they drift away over the glimmering sand. Kantara, April 1918 
End of section 55. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 56 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas. Night on the Convoy, Alexandria to Marseille. Out in the blustering darkness, on the deck a gleam of stars look down. Long blurs of black, the lean destroyers level with our track. Plunging and stealing, watch the perilous way through backward racing seas and caverns of chill spray. One sentry by the davits in the gloom stands mute. The boat heaves onward through the night. Shrouded is every chink of cabined light, and sluiced by floundering waves that hiss and boom, and crash like guns, the troop ship shudders, doom. Now something at my feet stirs with a sigh, and slowly growing used to groping dark, I know that the hurricane deck, down all its length, is heaped and spread with lads in sprawling strength blanketed soldiers sleeping in the stark danger of life at war they lie so still all prostrate and defenceless head by head and i remember arras and that hill where dumb with pain i stumbled among the dead we are going home the troop ship in a thrill of fiery chambered anguish throbs and rolls we are going home victims three thousand souls may nineteen eighteen End of section 56. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 57 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas. A Letter Home to Robert Graves. Here I'm sitting in the gloom of my quiet attic room. France goes rolling all around, fledged with forest May has crowned. And I puff my pipe, calm-hearted, thinking how the fighting started. Wondering when we'll ever end it, back to hell with Kaiser send it. Gag the noise, pack up and go, clockwork soldiers in a row. I've got better things to do than to waste my time on you. Robert, when I drowse to-night, skirting lawns of sleep to chase, shifting dreams in mazy light, somewhere then I'll see your face, turning back to bid me follow, where I wag my arms and hollow, over hedges hasting after, crooked smile and baffling laughter, running tireless, floating, leaping, down your web-hung woods and valleys, garden glooms and hornbeam alleys, where the glow-worm stars are peeping till i find you quiet as stone on a hilltop all alone staring outward gravely pondering jumbled leagues of hillock wandering you and i have walked together in the starving winter weather we've been glad because we knew time's too short and friends are few we've been sad because we missed one whose yellow head was kissed by the gods who thought about him till they couldn't do without him now he's here again i've seen soldier david dressed in green standing in a wood that swings to the madrigal he sings he's come back all mirth and glory like the prince in a fairy story winter called him far away blossoms bring him home with may well i know you'll swear it's true that you found him decked in blue striding up through morning land with a cloud on either hand out in wales you'll say he marches arm in arm with oaks and larches hides all night in hilly nooks laughs at dawn in tumbling brooks yet it's certain here he teaches outpost schemes to groups of beaches and i'm sure as here i stand that he shines through every land that he sings in every place where we're thinking of his face robert there's a war in france everywhere men bang and blunder sweat and swear and worship chance creep and blink through cannon thunder rifles crack and bullets flick sing and hum like hornet swarms bones are smashed and buried quick yet through stunning battle storms all the while i watch the spark lit to guide me for i know dreams will triumph though the dark scowls above me where i go you can hear me you can mingle radiant folly with my jingle war's a joke for me and you while we know such dreams are true End of section 57. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 
Section fifty eight of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon, read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas. Reconciliation When you are standing at your hero's grave, or near some homeless village where he died, remember through your heart's rekindling pride the German soldiers who were loyal and brave. Men fought like brutes, and hideous things were done, and you have nourished hatred harsh and blind but in that golgotha perhaps you'll find the mothers of the men who killed your son november nineteen eighteen end of section fifty eight this librivox recording is in the public domain section fifty nine of the war poems of siegfried sassoon by siegfried sassoon read for librivox dot org by beth thomas memorial tablet great war squire nagged and bullied till i went to fight under lord darby's scheme i died in hell they called it passchendaele my wound was slight and i was hobbling back and then a shell burst slick upon the duck boards so i fell into the bottomless mud and lost the light in sermon time while squire is in his pew he gives my gilded name a thoughtful stare for though low down upon the list i'm there in proud and glorious memory that's my due Two bleeding years I fought in France for Squire. I suffered anguish that he's never guessed. Once I came home on leave and then went west. What greater glory could a man desire? End of section 59. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 60 of The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas the deathbed he drowsed and was aware of silence heaped round him unshaken as the steadfast walls aqueous like floating rays of amber light soaring and quivering in the wings of sleep silence and safety and his mortal shore lipped by the inward moonless waves of death someone was holding water to his mouth he swallowed unresisting moaned and dropped through crimson gloom to darkness and forgot the opiate throb and ache that was his wound water calm sliding green above the weir water a skylit alley for his boat bird voiced and bordered with reflected flowers and shaken hues of summer drifting down he dipped contented oars and sighed and slept night with a gust of wind was in the ward blowing the curtain to a glimmering curve night he was blind he could not see the stars glinting among the wraiths of wandering cloud. Queer blots of colour, purple, scarlet, green, flickered and faded in his drowning eyes. Rain, he could hear it rustling through the dark, fragrance and passionless music woven as one. Warm rain on drooping roses, pattering showers that soak the woods, not the harsh rain that sweeps behind the thunder, but a trickling peace, gently and slowly, washing life away he stirred shifting his body then the pain leaped like a prowling beast and gripped and tore his groping dreams with grinding claws and fangs but someone was beside him soon he lay shuddering because that evil thing had passed and death who stepped towards him paused and stared light many lamps and gather round his bed lend him your eyes warm blood and the will to live speak to him rouse him you may save him yet he's young he hated war how should he die when cruel old campaigners win safe through but death replied i choose him so he went and there was silence in the summer night silence and safety and the veils of sleep then far away the thudding of the guns end of section sixty this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 61 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org by Carla Cortes Aftermath Have you forgotten yet? For the world's events have rumbled on since those gag days, 
like traffic checked a while at the crossing of city ways and the haunted gap in your mind has filled with thoughts that flow like clouds in the late heavens of life and your men reprieve to go taking your peaceful share of time with joy to spare but the past is just the same and worse a bloody game have you forgotten yet look down and swear by the slain of the war that you'll never forget do you remember that hour of din before the attack and the anger the blind compassion that seized and shook you then as you peered at the doomed and haggard faces of your men do you remember the stretcher cases lurching back with dying eyes and lolling heads those ashen gray masks of the lads who once were keen and kind and gay have you forgotten yet look up and swear by the green of the spring that you'll never forget end of section 61 this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 62 of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org Songbooks of the War In fifty years when peace outshines Remembrance of the battle lines Adventurous lads will sigh and cast Proud looks upon the plundered past. On summer morn or winter's night, Their hearts will kindle for the fight, Reading a snatch of soldier song, Savage and jaunty, fierce and strong. And through the angry marching rhymes Of blind regret and haggard mirth, They'll envy us the dazzling times When sacrifice absolved our earth. Some ancient man with silver locks will lift his weary face to say, War has a fiend who stopped our clocks, although we met him grim and gay. And then he'll speak of Haig's last drive, marveling that any came alive, out of the shambles that men built and smashed to cleanse the world of guilt. But the boys, with grin and sidelong glance, will think, Poor granddad's day is done. And dream of lads who fought in France and lived in time to share the fun. End of section sixty two. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section sixty three of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon. Read for LibriVox.org. Everyone sang. Everyone suddenly burst out singing, and I was filled with such delight as prisoned birds must find in freedom, winging wildly across the white. Orchards and dark green fields, on, on, and out of sight. Everyone's voice was suddenly lifted, and beauty came like the setting sun. My heart was shaking with tears and horror, drifted away. Oh, but every one was a bird, and the song was wordless. The singing will never be done. End of section 63. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. End of the War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon by Siegfried Sassoon.